Boston Bruins head coach Bruce Cassidy was clearly frustrated after Tuesday night's loss to the St. Louis Blues, a game in which Torrey Krug made his return to TD Garden and scored for the visiting Blues. Going to talk about all that and a lot more on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be as well as take a look around the NHL. Today is Wednesday, April 13th. I want to thank you so much for making Locked on Bruins your first listen every day. The podcast is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, so please do subscribe to both the audio and the video portions. That would be greatly appreciated. Some bonus content dropping on the YouTube channel from time to time that you're not going to want to miss. If you're on Twitter, you can follow along at Locked NHL Bruins. You can find me, my dad jokes, hockey tweets at Ian C. McLaren. And uh, yeah, been covering the Bruins for various outlets for 17 years now. And uh, looking forward to the stretch run here into the postseason. Always fun to be in the playoff mix, although there are some serious injury concerns. Uh, for the Bruins. Before we get to last night's game, a quick bit of breaking news from Kevin Weeks. He's saying this morning that it will be the Pittsburgh Penguins that will be visiting the Boston Bruins at the upcoming 2023 NHL Winter Classic, which will be played on January 2nd at Fenway Park. Uh, Not a surprise at all, seeing as Fenway owns the Pittsburgh Penguins, so they it's a bit of a win-win for them uh, with the hometown team in there and the team that they own in there. Uh, not really overly innovative on the part of the NHL to have the Bruins-Penguins playing in an outdoor game, but it'll still be fun nonetheless. I uh, would love to get down there for that. So let's see if we can make that happen. And... Uh, Good news is there'll be a new jersey and a new toque to uh, acquire for that game. Now, the Bruins last night hosted the St. Louis Blues. The red-hot St. Louis Blues, I should add. They, uh, I think they were 7-0-1 coming into this one. They proceeded to beat the Bruins by a score of 4-2. This game was highlighted by the return of Torrey Krug. It was his first game back in Boston since signing with the St. Louis Blues prior to last season. He went out and had a pretty good game for the Blues. One goal, one assist, five shots on goal in the win for the Blues. Uh, His goal was the second of the night, and he also assisted on the fourth goal scored by Vladimir Tarasenko. Tarasenko scored the uh, game-winning goal and the insurance goal for the St. Louis Blues. And Bruce Cassidy, not very pleased with his team's effort after this one. The big takeaway quote was, it's just not really very intelligent hockey. Let me say that again. It's just really not very intelligent hockey. You don't win against good teams when you don't play intelligent hockey. I think our effort, we're trying. Guys are working hard. It's just we've got to be smarter, plain, and simple. He said what he saw from the team was more like what the Bruins brought to the table back in November when they were unable to put together full 60-minute efforts and um, went through a stretch of losing four games in a row against playoff teams. He said, our habits 
we're good for half of the game. So we're back to November where we played half a hockey game and then shot ourselves in the foot and couldn't do enough to recover against good hockey clubs. Seen this before. Seen this film before. Didn't like the ending. He said, I've seen this before. Just haven't seen it in a while. Um, He's not happy with some of the trends that he's seeing. All the goals against. A few of them, the Bruins had the puck on their stick. Very similar to Washington the other night. Uh, Take a bad penalty. Two of them really shot the puck into the crowd. And then there was a penalty from Trent Frederick that he was not pleased at all with. Uh, He was asked his level of disappointment with Frederick's penalty. And he responded... High. That was a roughing penalty in the second period against Vladimir Tarasenko. Didn't lead to a power play goal, but still not what the Bruins want to see. He played only two more shifts after that. Um, Cassidy benched him for the end of the second period and most of the third. He ended up playing just 831, the lowest of any Bruin besides Brandon Carlo who we'll touch on here in a moment. So he called out Trent Frederick there. He also called out uh, Charlie Coyle by name. Uh, He said the third goal, the game-winning goal by the Blues, was a face-off win for the Bruins. They don't get to the middle as a defensive coalition. They lose a battle, don't reload to the right position, And on the last goal, Charlie Coyle refused to shoot the puck toward the net. They had people going there. He loses a battle, and they're gone, and the Bruins give up that fourth goal. Uh, The power play, also not very good again. 0 for 2 last night. They're now 0 for 18 over their last five games. Uh... Bruce Cassidy said there was a lack of execution. He thought the Bruins were, quote, selfish. Guys are holding the puck too long, wanting to make the play instead of letting the puck do the work. Those two things are fairly evident. And that was a trend back in November as well. You know, holding onto the puck too much, trying to make that extra pass. These are trends that are setting back in at the wrong time here uh, for the Bruins, who... Um, have now lost two games in a row after beating the Lightning back on Friday. They had now lost three of their last four games, including last week's loss to the Detroit Red Wings. They'll have an opportunity to turn things around on Thursday, back at home against the Ottawa Senators. Uh, We'll touch on some positives from last night's game as well as another injury on the blue line. But first, a quick word about HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. You get farm fresh Seasonal produce and easy-to-make recipes delivered right to your door every week. It's all about convenience with HelloFresh. Not only do the ingredients come pre-portioned, so you're not overbuying or wasting food, but it's easier than ever to get filling meals on the table in a snap with options like family-friendly or quick and easy recipes. We had a free trial a couple years ago during a difficult time for us, and it was Huge to be able to have those easy to prepare meals that were delicious for the whole family. Go to HelloFresh.com slash LockedOn16. Use code LockedOn16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash LockedOn16. Use code LockedOn16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 free gifts. Uh, America's number one meal kit. That's HelloFresh. Thank you so much again for making Locked On Bruins your first listen every day. The podcast free and available on all platforms as well as YouTube. So please do 
hit that subscribe button. Also check out the Locked On Now podcast, which is a daily recap of all the previous night's action from all of our local experts. Now the Bruins were playing this game already without Hampus Lindholm, David Posterdock, Matt Grizzlick, and they also lost Brandon Carlo to injury in this one. He played only about four minutes of ice time, and uh, head coach Bruce Cassidy didn't have any information other than to say he wasn't feeling right, which, you know, is not uh, not something you want to hear from a guy who has a concussion history uh, for sure. So Carlo leaves this one. That leaves the Bruins with only three of their top four, sorry, top six defensemen. Well, yeah, top four uh, included uh, with Lindholm, Grizzlick, and now Carlo. Again, Cassidy said he wasn't feeling good midway through the first. He'll be reevaluated. Sometime today, uh, all he was told is that he was out for the night. He does believe that Pasternak, Lindholm, their injuries are not long-term. Or long, long long-term, as he said. But he thought they'd be a little further along by the time... uh, From the time they first heard that they were going to be out. Grizzlick left Sunday's game. Uh, felt better Tuesday, and it's possible he could play Thursday against the Senators. However, he has missed uh, several segments over the past couple of seasons with upper body injuries, and they'll have to manage the situation. Uh, The Bruins are going to have to deal with it. He has to deal with it. Cassidy said he usually rebounds quickly, so everybody's keeping their fingers crossed. And uh, they'll have to get other guys ready to go in the event that he can't play. Now, Jack Ashawn was recalled prior to yesterday's game. They decided to go instead with uh, Connor Clifton and Josh Brown as the third pair. Uh, I would have preferred to put Ashawn in there. Uh, realistically, Brown had about 20 minutes of ice time, one shot, two hits, not bad. Clifton had an assist, six shots on goal in 21 minutes of ice time. Those guys had to play extra with Carlo out, so not a terrible game from them. Mike Riley was a minus two, took a penalty, two shots on goal. Clifton, of course, had that puck over glass penalty, which... Bruce Cassidy uh, lamented as not very intelligent hockey. Jeremy Swayman made 26 saves. uh, And, you know, trying to keep up with Linus Allmark for the number one goalie job. I'd still say that's Allmark's. Uh, Cassidy said Swayman's game was good. The goals, some of them he had no chance. If you look at St. Louis's lineup, they're not the same team that they were in 2019. Uh, they're great off the rush, good from the slot. They have, you know, I believe seven, at least 20 goal scorers, with a couple more on the way. Uh, so, yeah, they're a tough team to shut down. He thought Swayman was fine. The crew goal kind of squeaked through him. But it's a slot shot. It's a good shot. And they've seen Tory score from there before. There was another goal scored by Krug in the game that was called back uh, due to an offside call. So he did allow five goals in this one, but only four counted. Uh, thank goodness. But still, 867 save percentage on the night. And... Looking back at his last five games, he's really had, you know, two pretty good starts. 
a win over Tampa in which he stopped 22 of 24 shots. Then he allowed those six goals against the Leafs. Another two-goal game against the Blue Jackets on April 2nd. But then he allowed four last week against the Red Wings. Four last night against the uh, Blues. So it really looks like Olmark has the upper hand heading into the playoffs. Uh, the Bruins do have nine games remaining on the schedule, including Thursday's game against the Ottawa Senators. So still some time to figure things out. Um, but right now, really looks like they're locked into the first wild card spot. They're only one point back of Tampa, mind you. They have each played 73 games. Uh, the Lightning will have a chance to extend that lead uh, with their next game. When did they play? They don't play until Thursday. They play the Anaheim Ducks. They were shut out, actually, last night by the Dallas Stars. one nothing, which uh, kept the Bruins... Uh, well within striking distance of the St. Louis Blue. Oh, sorry, of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Bessie's getting into something over there. Before we move on, quick word about Built Bar. Have you tried their puffs? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting offerings. They're the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, marshmallowy, not just a protein bar. They're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. They're a fan favorite with some incredible flavors like yummy cinnamony churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. So good, they're really going to be your new favorite. All Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, and they're low-calorie, high-protein, uh, high-fiber, low-carbs, low-sugar. A Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it delicious first, then figure out how to make it healthy. I don't know how they do it, but they pull it off every time. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCK15, and get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Uh, Flip Livingstone and Steel Roden can help you become the experts of your fantasy league over at the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Make that your second listen after checking out Locked On Boston Bruins uh, every single day. So like I said, the Bruins, uh, one point back of the Lightning, five points back of the Maple Leafs, even though Toronto lost to Buffalo last night. So still some maneuvering when it comes to playoff position but if the Bruins are going to be without all three of Grizzlick, Lindholm and Carlo for any length of time that will obviously uh, keep them from being able to move up the standings uh, anytime soon uh, this one you know, the Blues really gave the Bruins a chance to win. Five on five, the Bruins had uh, a 67% advantage in terms of shot attempts. Uh, shots were 35-20, five on five. So that's a 63% uh, advantage for the Bruins. High danger chances were even at 7-7. Expected goals. The Bruins had a 2.24 to 1.39 advantage in this one. So they certainly did enough to come out on the better end of things. Overall, a 60.5 advantage in shot attempts. 41-30 shot advantage. Uh, high danger chances uh, actually were 9-7 in favor of the Blues, and they uh, had a better night on the power play. The Bruins' power play struggles uh, really coming back to haunt them. They certainly do miss David Pasternak along those lines. Uh, Dom Lissitian from The Athletic 
updating this morning his playoff probabilities and playoff chances. Uh, right now, the Bruins still with uh, yeah a high probability of uh, making the playoffs. A 55% chance of uh, winning the first round, which is pretty uh, pretty encouraging. And, uh, you know, they're getting the edge over the Carolina Hurricanes if they were to play there. Carolina Hurricanes at the moment with a 46% chance of advancing past the first round. So that tells me the Bruins, from his model, for what it's worth, would have the advantage over the Carolina Hurricanes. I think that's really where you would want to, uh, really where you would want to be. 45% chance that they will play the Carolina Hurricanes in the first round. Uh, so yeah, the Bruins, fourth rated team based on the model shared by uh, Dom Lecician of The Athletic, behind only Colorado, Toronto, and Florida. That, of course, means they need to be healthy, and they need to figure out the third pairing, and they probably need to give the net to Linus Allmark, who I would expect would be back between the pipes on uh, Thursday against the Ottawa Senators. Do you go back to him? For Saturday's game against the Penguins. I mean they got a few tough games coming up on the schedule. After the Ottawa game they play four games in a row against playoff teams. Pittsburgh at home. Then they travel to St. Louis and Pittsburgh. And then they play the Rangers next Saturday. Over the final week they play the Canadians. Should be a win. The Panthers. Uh, and then they finish with back-to-back -back against the Sabres and the Maple Leafs. The way the Sabres are playing, that will not be, uh, you know, an easy out for the Boston Bruins. So still a lot to be decided here in terms of playoff positioning. But the key is to get healthy and to reverse some of these trends that have been sneaking back in. Maybe Trent Frederick takes a seat in lieu of Anton Bleed. Uh, for the next game, just to send a message there, I would not be disappointed with that. And I would like to see Jack Ashan in the lineup over Brown and or no, over Brown or Clifton. Anyways, that's today's episode, friends. Thank you for uh, taking some time to listen. You can hear my voice still fighting this, whatever it is. Uh, thank you for checking out yesterday's episode with Sarah Griffin. Apologies for the echo. That was my bad for not putting in my AirPods. Trying to get a very special guest on the podcast, possibly for tomorrow. Uh, I'm not quite sure about Friday just yet with the holiday, but probably do uh, an episode then as well. Hope you're all having a great week. Uh, Lauren and I have been watching Pachinko on Apple TV, which is a Great show about uh, Korean family over the generations. Going to check out the latest episode of Moon Knight today. And I've also really been enjoying um, my watch of the Larry Sanders show for the first time. So yeah, thanks for checking out Locked On Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day. Have a good one.